Hey everybody! What do you know? Hope everybody's having an incredible Friday. It's less than 120 outside, I know, because I'm looking out my window uh, right on to first south and that grass at Wells Fargo. Guys, I need you to tell me if you can hear me. Uh, Jeremy Larkin here, host of the St. George Real Estate Morning Drive on Thursdays. I'm a real estate professional and uh, but I, need, I need to know if you can hear me, guys. So uh, hit that chat box, say thumbs up, I can hear you, you sound good. Say, Jeremy, you look good. Okay, I need to know that, okay. You don't have to do that, you guys, it's fine. But I do need to know, hey, Caleb, Dennis, Betty, Carrie Sanders, Carrie's 10 feet across. Carrie, can you hear me? Beautiful, I'm yelling her across the hall. Uh, yes, Jesse, yes, Trish. Woo, can you guys see this shirt that I wore for today's webinar, it's 1201. Mountain Standard Time. This is my barbecue shirt. I thought that this would be insanely appropriate for the middle of July because we just have the 24th and we're gonna, excuse me, we just had the 4th backwards. We're going to have the 24th of July. Gang, we're gonna share some incredible information a little bit later. Uh, panelist Chantry Abbott is going to hop in with us. He's uh, my special guest today. He's a mortgage professional that I've dealt with for a long time. Now, if you're a mortgage person, and you're like, well, how did I not get on there? Uh, we do have a, a, a pretty awesome relationship with several uh, mortgage companies here in town. And I'm a full disclosure kind of guy. So people we do uh, like 99% of our work with our Chantry Abbott Guild Mortgage, uh, Ben Zitting and Tyler Slask over at Bay Equity, and our man, Alex Hernandez, we're gonna talk about Desert Flower and Sunbud Homes today. Alex is with Academy Mortgage. So we're very open, we're very honest about how we do this. So, all right, uh, hoping you will, uh, you do have a Q&A at the bottom of the screen and we're gonna be fast. We're gonna share some incredible stuff today with you. I promise, uh, let, let me give you my, my commitment, okay? So if you're a real estate agent, mortgage, real estate professional, I promise you will walk away knowing more than you did before. Uh, you'll be able to speak in a more uh, professional, coherent manner, comfortable manner, right? to your to and with your clients and give them insights on making decisions if you are a friend a client and a family member and you just you're here because you know as they say on social media i'm here for comments you're here just to learn i promise you will be smarter than when you came into our our session today so uh let's do that uh, you guys ready is everybody ready if you've got questions please uh look at them you, you know you've got a q and for us below. We've got five poll questions today that we are going to share, right? Uh, we, we definitely want to put this in here. Now, here's the deal with the poll questions. They are anonymous, so I don't see who's answering. So when I ask a question, if you, did you have a mortgage uh, foreclosure? Did you lose a job because of COVID? Um, you, the public, you, people can't see what you're answering, so you don't need to worry about that, right? So are you guys ready to just fire this sucker up? I think we should get going. Uh, we're going to be we're going to be slideshowing today from our good friend. Uh, you guys know PowerPoint. You know PowerPoint's pretty dang cool. If you don't know who I am, uh, I've been selling real estate here in Washington County for 15 years. Exactly, July 1st, 2005. I got my real estate license, and I was officing on the St. George Boulevard with a company called JMI Jennings Management Inc. And we were developing Main Street Plaza, Sunset Corner where the theaters are, Pineview Plaza, where the theaters are, uh, and Fort Pierce Industrial Park. And I think you guys might enjoy a little fun uh, trivia to share with you. The summer that we opened Pineview Plaza, where the Stadium 10 Theater is, I was managing the property for JMI, the, the, the whole complex. And somehow, I allowed the sprinkler clock to get turned off. And I show up on the one, like, Tuesday in 2000 and this is probably four. All of the grass is dead along 2450 South. Guys, like it's yellow, <laughs> the entire place. And I'm going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I have no idea what happened. I mean, it's not like I was out there managing the sprinkler clock, but we watered the crap out of it and it came back. The green just came right back up through. So uh, I was managing and developing commercial property. I got into selling homes in 2005 because I was just kind of worn out with what I was doing. Uh, and uh, the, the rest is history. I've surrounded myself with some of the best people in 
Washington County, and we've grown our business. And a lot of you watching are, are our clients. So let's get into it, guys. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen. I hope that you can see it. If anyone cannot see it, I need you to tell me. Uh, and uh, you know, we're gonna do it, okay? So uh, we're gonna resume the slideshow. Let me stop this share and let me share a better screen, all right? Uh, 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 uh. Let's see here, okay. Uh, Carrie, are we visible? I'm yelling at her through the, through the hallway, okay. So, uh, all right, so I wanna share with you guys, uh, Today, we've got some great information. I've talked about my friend Chantry Abbott. He's gonna hop on a little bit later. He's dealing with a business catastrophe. Like wildfire, okay? St. George Housing, open space, political climate are on fire. What does it mean for the future of our community? I'm gonna ask a question later about Dixie, what do you think? Special guest, Chantry Abbott, uh, Guild Mortgage. Let's just start sliding through these guys. We pull a bunch of our information for something called Keeping Current Matters, okay? Keeping Current Matters, and it's a very, very helpful um, data source. And we pulled information from Keeping Current Matters today. This is what I use for my radio show. I also pulled information from Southern Utah Title, praying, thanking, hands, emoji to Mitch Larson and our gang over at Southern Utah Title. So today we're going to be pulling uh, information from both of these sources. So let's talk about jobs, guys. The consensus was um, everyone lost their job, is what you were told or heard in, in uh, what was this? In April, because of COVID, not everybody really did. We're gonna look at Washington County here momentarily, but a lot of people did. And the consensus is that 3 million jobs would be added back into the economy in June. $4.8 million, okay? 4.8, and you know, it's interesting. I'd love to know what people think the reason is for that. What do you think the reason is for 4.8 million jobs coming back in June versus an estimated 3 million? Okay, the economy gains 4.8 million jobs. Well, does it surprise any of you to know that 2.1 million of the 4.8 million, they were in leisure and hospitality. So everybody knows what we're talking about right here. Like people lost their job in uh, restaurant business and in the hotel business, and then they got the job back, okay? So that's how that went down. Um, the secondary group was retail, right? We closed our retail stores for a really long time. Education and health services, 568,000, and then they go on from there. Interestingly, we still uh, were down 10,000 in mining. Uh, don't know enough about mining. Uh, this is the Bureau of Labor Statistics. That, well, that's BLS, not BLM, okay? B Bureau of Labor Statistics unemployment rate. Look at this, this is as reported in January, February, March, April, May, June. Uh, there you have it, okay? So we went from 3.5% unemployment in Washington, Washington County in the United States in February to 14.7. 14.7 wouldn't sound like a lot if you didn't know how low it was before, okay? And jobs are coming back, all right. So, all right, are these people, are these temporary unemployments or are they permanent unemployments, right? So here's what we know here. This, this is again, um, this is up through 613 and this is kind of nice to know here. So look, when, when we got back into June, we were back to 11.1% unemployment right? Now, what percentage are, per, are permanent? Well, 40 and a half percent. So one of the things you have to understand, especially about Washington County, is that most everybody before COVID, most everyone who wanted a job had a job. So 3% unemployment nationally and locally is, is zero. It's essentially zero. It means either they're on disability and they, they won't work or they don't want to work. So, um, Pretty much everybody out there that needed and wanted a job had needed, you know, had a job, right? You guys with me? So I see a question in here. We're going to answer this later. Is now a good time to build a custom home? Ooh, that is going to be a great one. We are going to answer it. Thank you for plugging that in here. Uh, but, but, but bear with me for just a minute, okay? So now, Carrie, I've lost my chat box, and I don't know why. So what I may have to have you do, I, I, don't, I don't know what's happened here. Chat is gone. Chat is gone. I don't know where it went. It may have something to do with me sharing my screen. So guys, you may be chatting and I don't know what you're chatting about. Carrie, Carrie if you're able, come in here with your laptop. Okay? Can you come in with your laptop? You have your laptop here? Yeah, I'll just need you to come in here so I can see what who's chatting. We're on the same screen on your laptop. Oh, okay, very good, thank you. Okay, so this is really good. I apologize, guys, no one told me this. I had no idea. I didn't know you were only seeing the screen on my, on my left. Pause. Everybody pause, I see the chat now, all right? 
So I'm going to back up through here. I am so grateful that she walked in here. Okay. Uh, I need to know. Carrie, you'll have to come in here and tell me, do we now see our unemployment graphs? Okay, we're good to go. So guys, consensus 3 million jobs is what we are supposed to gain. We have 4.8 come back. 2.1 million of those jobs came back in leisure and hospitality. Basically, everyone who lost their job in the restaurant and in the hotel business, most of them got their job back, right? Uh, like, who out there is going for restaurants? Well, I'm going, I, I go out to eat. I mean, I'm not alone, am I? Everybody's going out to eat. So uh, at least I think they are, right? Unemployment rates, we talked about this. Uh, we went from 35 to 14%, and it spiked pretty quick. Okay, folks, so what about St. George, right? Like, what's going on in Washington County? Well, Washington County, this is through May. Look at this spike. You know, I spoke with Leisha Langston, who's with the Department of Workforce Services. She said they went from like 40 unemployment claims a lot of weeks. There were 1,800 in week 13 of the year. 18, we went from 40 to 1,800 unemployment claims, okay? In a, in, like in a two to three week period because it kind of went Woo, like a big wave, okay? Now, one thing I want you to see is look at it now, guys. We're solid as a rock, right? Like our unemployment is, is back to, it's pretty low, okay? Now, what I don't have is I don't have job growth data for Washington County, but what you can see is we spiked and then our unemployment uh, claims, these are claims, this is not the unemployment rate, our claims came way, way, way down. We're back to what would be considered pretty typical unemployment claims. Okay, were you affected? All right. Um, should we launch a, launch a poll question? I think we, uh, whoops. Well, shoot, guys. Let's see here. Uh, oh, this is perfect. Okay. Uh, let's launch the polling. Have you lost uh, this? A, a, either, this was supposed to read a little differently. That's why I said whoops. I, I, I apologize, guys. Um, here we go. Uh, have you lost business or clients as a result of COVID-19? What I wanted to ask you was, did you lose business or a job, not clients, as a result of COVID-19? Anyone you know, anyone you know personally. Now, by the way, personally doesn't mean you heard about it on Facebook, okay? Does someone you know lose business, clients as a real estate agent, or a job as a result of COVID-19, okay? We're gonna let this run for about 10, 20 seconds, okay? Uh, let, me, let me check on one thing while you guys are polling. Did, have you lost a job, business, or clients? Okay, guys, here we go. 61% of you, okay, check this out. 61% of you said, yes, I lost business, I lost clients, uh, someone I know lost a job as a result of uh, COVID-19, okay? Look at that. Isn't that amazing? 61% said yes, okay? Holy cow. Like, wow, guys, I mean, a lot of people were affected, okay? Uh, somebody says, I haven't, but relatives have. Uh, Dixie Larkin, do you love that? We're gonna ask about the Dixie name later. That's my mother says, we're here. We can hear you loud and clear, okay? Trish says, it is a seller's market and has COVID impacted the price of uh, homes. <laughs> it's as though I asked her to ask the question. Thank you, Trish. Okay, so 61% lost, had, had, were affected. Okay, let's go back and look at this, guys. So let's talk through this. Uh, this is kind of fun, US job growth, as U.S. job growth surged last month, underscoring the economy's capacity for a quick rebound. But the orange, a, a recent coronavirus spike could undermine trend. We all know this, right? Now, if, but this mask mandates could keep our economy going fantastically. I was going to ask, and I didn't ask, but should we, should we be wearing masks? I, I was going to put that in as a poll question. It's a great question. Okay, gang. When's the next foreclosure boom? Trish, we're gonna answer your question. We're gonna answer all these questions. Well, there really aren't any foreclosures in Washington County right now. Let me explain. This is a national statistic right here. Per the percentage of distressed 
property sales. Okay, what they mean is what percentage of all sales is a distressed property sale, right? Short sale or foreclosure. Now remember, a foreclosure is pretty simple. You don't pay your bill for a long time, the bank takes the house away per your, your loan agreement. A short sale is when your home is worth 400, but you owe 500 and you have to sell it. You're like, well, wait, I owe the bank 500, but I can only sell for 400. Where does the other 100 go? You negotiate or we negotiate on your behalf with the bank to like wipe away, waive that deficiency. It's called a short sale. All right. So look at this. January 2012, a full third of the home sales across the United States of America were distressed. All right. As of January 2020, 3%. Okay. What about, what about uh, Washington County? So notices of default, thank you Southern Utah title for this data. A notice of default is a pre-foreclosure. Uh, here, here's what it is. Hey, you got a problem, dude. You haven't been paying your bills for whatever reason. And we're going to send you a notice when you're 90 days late on your payment. Well, look at 2019 to 2000. Gang, there was only 179 of them in the entire 2019 year. This is not a foreclosure. It's a foreclosure notice. 62 so far in 2020. Well, what about pre actual foreclosures? Well, there's been 24 in the first six months of the year. 24 in the first six months of the year. So trustees deeds, AKA foreclosures, trustees, why do we have to have all this jargon in our business, right? Uh, trustees deeds, okay, foreclosures. There have only been 24 in the entire year. Let's go back to this slide. Less than 3% of sales across the entire country are foreclosures. Again, people are not in trouble. And I'm going to talk to you momentarily about why. Okay, were you affected? Should we launch a poll? Let's launch a poll. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we shared our polling results earlier. 61% uh, of our viewers knew someone or actually lost business, lost clients, or lost a job. All right, let's close that down. Let's, uh, let's launch another poll. Okay, so my next question, all right, next question is, all right, foreclosure, launch the polling. Did you experience foreclosure, a foreclosure, or short sale during the last housing crisis? Remember, this is anonymous. I have no idea who's even responding, okay, and no one can see your response. Uh, and if we had 500 people in here, our sampling might be a little different, right? So... Did you experience foreclosure or a short sale during the last housing crisis? I got news, people. Like 50% of the real estate agents in this town went through at least a short sale. Some of the biggest names in Washington County real estate, now I didn't, I will say that. Some of the biggest names in Washington County real estate had massive developments going on. Cedar City, Washington County, everything went upside down. They, they had to foreclose, they had to short sale and rebuild the credit back. All right, uh, let's find out here. Let's share the results. 24% said yes. Uh, a quarter of our viewers right now had a short sale or foreclosure during the last housing crisis. 76% uh, said no. Okay, let's stop sharing these results for a minute. Uh, let's go back to this thing. Here's what's going on, right? This is what you need to know. Of all forbearance escape, so forbearance is a long story, okay? Forbearance is, is a, term where we're going in and uh, I, you call the bank and you say, look, I'm not making my bills. I have a problem because of COVID-19 or whatever is going on. Can you like help me out here? Can you put this off? Can you spare me the loss? Can you, can you, can I kick the can down the road? Can I make all my payments in 90 days? 77% have at least 20% equity in their home. Only 1% of the people in trouble right now don't have equity in their house. So when people go, well, why aren't there any foreclosures? Well, there don't need to be. Everyone has equity. And the reason why is home values continue to go up, right? So and we're going to talk about this momentarily because we have some questions that are being asked. Has COVID-19 affected the price of uh, homes? Actually, it's causing them to go up, we think. So let's keep going on here. We're going to talk about why, all right? 87% of home sellers are concerned their home won't sell because of this pandemic and resulting economic recession. Right, it was our fear also. 
But here's what happened, gang. Things didn't go the way that we thought they were, would, okay? Question is asked, are there really home buyers out there? Okay, is the market up or down since COVID? Well, I think we should ask you, right? Let's, let's launch the polls. All right, number three, here we go. Uh, launch polling, do you think home prices, and we're gonna answer, and housing demand is up or down? And I've given you a little bit of a teaser. Do you think housing demand and home prices are up or down as a result or since COVID-19? Because I have quite a few real estate agents in here, I think a lot of people are gonna say up. Um, I'm getting 100% saying up. I gave you the teaser. I was a little too early with that one. Uh, it's fun, in the chat box, someone tell me, do you, what did you think would happen, right? What did you think would happen? And I think we all know, like we all know what we thought would happen, right? Uh, I can get my chat back. Uh, throw in the chat box, what did you think would happen? And polling, share results. 100% of you think home prices have gone up, the demand is up. The answer is, uh, you are correct, sir and madam. Uh, and again, you can throw in the chat box, do, what did you think they would do? Uh, I thought they would. So second week of March, we were really scared, guys. Really scared. Uh, like, you know, you circle the wagons. Remember the old thing is circling the wagons? Why did people cir circle the wagons back, crossing the plains, pioneering to the West? Circle the wagons at nighttime to protect their people, to protect their cattle from wolves, intruders, marauders, etc. So we circled the wagons in the real estate business, right? Uh, I called my team in, called everybody I knew and said, look, I think the market could just completely go upside down. We need to plan for another 2008, if it happens. We hacked, I mean, I had like a machete, a chainsaw, a hatchet, a, a, we were blowing up costs. We were just getting rid of our, our costs. Big time, big time. Uh, Stephen Brown is over on Facebook. I have you in a separate window. Um, good day, my friend. Thanks for watching. So um, we hunkered down, guys. We circled the freaking wagons. And then guess what happened? The opposite happened. Let's get into it, okay? You guys ready to see here? Check this out. Buyer traffic index. All right, so they study, National Association of Realtors studies buyer traffic. Like how many people are out looking at homes? And they do it from internet traffic to real estate websites, open houses, showings, and I'm gonna to talk to you momentarily about how we actually know what's going on with home showings across the country, and then polling real estate professionals. All right, so buyer traffic. Gray is very weak, light gray is weak, light blue is stable, blue is strong. Do you see Utah? Okay, do you see Utah? Uh, and again, gang, I got my chat box back, so we're good to go if you've got some comments or questions. Buyer traffic is strong. Now, isn't this amazing? They're saying buyer traffic is actually weak in California, Nevada. I don't know if I believe that, okay? Well, what's going on with home prices? There's our friend George Washington. Well, this is, this is kind of an indicator. I'm gonna show you how this all lumps together. Okay, so this is the impact of COVID-19 to real estate showings in North America. Well, does it surprise you that around mid-April, people stopped going physically to homes? And we came out and we were like, hey, we can do virtual open houses. And we did them. I'd show up, selfie stick. Uh, we'd walk around the house and show people the home for 15, 20 minutes. It was kind of like a video tour, but it was really interactive. This is North America. Well, what happened in Utah? All right, so this is the impact of showings in Utah. Let's pitch back here. North America, massive dip. Utah, less of a dip, why? I'd love some commentary, guys. If you think, do you have a theory on why that happened? Like, why, you know, why wouldn't, why would that change? Does that make sense? Why would Utah not be so impacted as other parts of the country? Well. I think a lot of us have a theory on this and we're probably all right. It's because we're in Utah. And if you look around at what's been happening, it's mainly been blue, very democratic, very um, large cities, those kinds of states. It just is what it is, guys. We're not putting a political show on, but those areas and cities have been crushed by COVID. 
I have friends who still can't show properties in person in a couple of little nooks across the country. So what's been going on, okay? Nationally, 21.4% more people are looking at real estate as they were in the last year at this time. Remember the pandemic was supposed to ruin the economy? Uh, newly pending sales. Pending sales are up 18.8%. New listings are up five, okay, well, let's back up. Total listings are down. So Trish asked a question earlier. All right, Jeremy, what's going on with home prices? Home prices are actually going up. And the reason Chantry's here, we're gonna bring, dude, can you, hey man, can you, let's see if I can hear you. Can you uh, hear talk. Me? Bingo, perfect. Okay, we're gonna get into some mortgage stuff. Chantry Abbott's here, Guild Mortgage, did you resolve your crisis, your catastrophe? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I hope so too, man. I hope so as well. So, um, turn my speakers up here. So total listings are down. And what's happening, gang, is supply of properties available for buyers to purchase is down. And it's down because people thought COVID-19 was going to ruin the market. They weren't sure if they wanted someone traipsing through their home. Um, maybe they had a job loss or something that caused them to not lose the home they're in, but go, well, how am I going to qualify for a new mortgage, right? And a giant wave of people came rushing out of the gates in May when all of a sudden we said, oh, never mind, you can go back and show houses again. So when supply goes down, Chantry, you're with us now. When supply goes down, what happens to prices, my friend? They go up. Yeah. This is, conversation this people, is, uh, like market high is price is going to go down. It's like anything, right? It's anything. We have a shortage on gas prices go up. So, so the best measuring tool, in my opinion, is this, is the supply and demand, right? right. Yep, yep, it, it really is. And uh, this is absolutely Forrest Fonsbeck. He was my Dixie High School sophomore econ teacher, <laughs> right? He taught me about supply and demand. And uh, this is like eBay, you know? When nothing's available, people start bidding on something and actually sell for more than the seller was asking. The amazing part is we actually have clients who are in multiple offer bidding wars on their home, meaning they have multiple buyers bidding against each other to buy their home. But, but wait, there's more, right? We have a whole bunch of buyers who keep getting beat out in bidding wars. Jesse, uh, we talked about one of those clients today. As a matter of fact, they're out at our Sunwood uh, Desert Flower model right now looking at that because every time they try to buy uh, an existing home, they go into offer. They're a young couple. Uh, they're on an FHA financing. They don't have a large down payment. They don't have cash. So they show up. The seller's asking $299. There's 10 people offering on the home. It sells for $305 or $310. Three or four of them are cash buyers. Right? Chantry, you're seeing this for your borrowers all over, right? You know, they, they, they're going, I, how do I buy a house? Because I keep getting beat out by other buyers. Right? Yeah. And there's just not enough homes available. So that, that one person becomes... Maybe not, maybe this isn't the best word, but almost desperate. Like we've been looking for homes for four months. We have to be in a home by X date. We don't care if we're gonna pay 10 grand over asking price, we gotta have this house. Yeah, we don't care, right? We, we, yeah. we literally don't care, okay? Um, so, so this is really great for sellers, but, but I think we need to talk about the fact that it's also great for buyers. So look at this really quick, guys. This is very small. It's just the way it pulled out of my system today. Okay, this is what we call an absorption rate. There's about three and a half months of, three months of now, inventory available for buyers. It, months of inventory means how long it would take to sell all the homes. Last year this time, there's about three and a half months inventory. See, this is May. My June numbers will be lower yet. Average sales price in Washington County, 381, 361. It just keeps climbing. Last year it was 357. So average sales price is up 6% from 2019. But I thought we were having a pandemic. We are, apparently. But again, the problem for buyers is that we don't have enough listings on the market, right? So you see the total listings. So if you're, if you're thinking about selling a home, this is your time. Now the question would come up, Chantry, but wait a minute. If I sell a home right now, should I buy another home because it feels like I'd be overpaying? Talk to, talk to people about the actual, the, the, not just the psychology, but like the data that would maybe tell them they're crazy. <laughs> yeah. The, the first thing I, because I get that every day, is, is, is the market high. The fact of the matter is no one in the world knows. No one yeah. in the world knows. 
nobody for sure can predict that. So the first question is, are you looking to buy a house that your family will live in long term? Are you looking to buy a house that you're going to flip in a year for a profit? Mm -hmm. If you're looking to buy a house for your family to live in long term, what does long term mean to you? Oh, 10 years. Can you envision a situation right now where 10 years from now, the home values are higher in 10 years than they are today? And the reason yeah. is they'll be higher, right? It's just the way it goes. Everything, Every, everything will be inflated, right? Everything will need to be higher. You know what? My parents talked about the first truck they bought was $6,000 in 1980. Well, $6,000 in 1980 was probably the equivalent of $30,000 today. It's not that that truck was cheap. It's just, it was, it's all relative. Correct. Correct. So, and I think it's kind of fun because what people aren't considering, and we'll talk about this momentarily, is what's going on with interest rates, right? So, so let me, let me jump here. So this is so exactly right. Am I moving in for five plus years, seven plus years, 10 years, or am I like trying to flip the home? So inventory is a percentage of households. It's half. So here's what this means. Typically in the United States, two and a half percent of the population has a home on the market type thing, right? So we're at half that. We don't have the inventory. So what's gonna happen with home prices? Well, all right. So here's, here's you know, when they talk about they, they chantry, well, they say, right? Here's they. Home, exp home price expectation survey, which is a survey of a whole bunch of different economic outfits, Mortgage Bankers Association, Zellman Associates, which is, which is a think tank that studies housing data, Fannie Mae, National Association of Realtors, Freddie Mac. Here's what they're all saying, okay? The only, here's the funny part, the home price expectation survey surveys the public. And the public's like, I think prices are gonna go down. What are all the professionals with the data saying? Guys, prices are probably going up. So as you see here going, well, maybe I shouldn't buy a house right now. I'm gonna say, well, just look at the data. Um, People are, we talked Chantry earlier about foreclosures. Where are the foreclosures? And I shared the Sudico data that there are no foreclosures. You can't have a foreclosure boom when no one's even in foreclosure, right? How many people, how many, how, do you remember 10 years ago how our daily dialogue was all about every person who was in short sale or foreclosure? Yeah, yeah. All day. Even the thing to do, right? You get around everybody's get together and find out who's short selling and letting the house go. For every conversation on a daily basis is about that. So here, so, so look, um, are they coming, okay? Well, are people really coming to Washington County? Buyers show a greater desire for non-urban properties. Andrew, there you go. So this is an increase, year-over-year -year increase in views per property. 16% increase in rural properties. 13% increase, this is what buyers are looking at. 13% increase in suburban. St. George is pretty much suburban. The entire town is. Urban is urban, guys. It's what it sounds like, okay? So, um, Chantry, isn't it logical? Go ahead. The wave of being able to work from home. I mean, I'm seeing it all the time. Folks that live in Northern California and have to commute an hour and a half a day for work and spend $2,000 a month for their kid to go to a private school. Mm -hmm. I moved to Southern Utah, work from home, same job, not have to commute, not have to pay for school, not have to worry about all those things they have to deal with. And so I think that's the big reason that the rural and suburban are spiking probably as we can do. Yep. Well, so I'm going to share a quick story. My friend Nick Shivers, Nick, I hope you'll stay on. Nick's in Portland and he's actually watching on Facebook, or at least he was for a minute. Um, Nick shared a story, and I shared this on a radio show about maybe four weeks ago. Gets an email from a, from a, an agent. Hey, Nick. So Nick's representing the seller. Agent's representing the buyer. He says, hey, man, I'm sorry to send you this cancellation, but the buyer's out. What happens is the buyer comes into Portland. They're going to buy a home. They put a home under contract. While the home's under contract, they come to downtown to do some inspections. While they're downtown, their car gets vandalized by rioters and protesters. They come back and they're like, we can't, this isn't safe, man. We actually can't even see ourselves moving to anywhere in Portland. 
let alone downtown. They weren't moving downtown. So people start saying the question, are they coming? Well, do we think they're coming? Uh, much like the suburbs are gaining favor with, sec with shop home shoppers, second home markets are seeing increased interest from the luxury buyers. First of all, the luxury buyers are coming. I shot a video, I shot this April 6th, could COVID-19 improve St. George real estate? I shot that from my bicycle. I said, maybe this will actually fuel the market because I, I, I was able to 100% and I'm having those conversations every day. Are you, okay, so you're, you're in a mortgage office helping people buy homes. What, what is the conversation? The conversation is just like, hey, we've always really wanted to move to St. George. We're in Portland, we're in Northern California, right? And uh, we thought we were gonna do it in five years, but this just really became our break. Yes. Living in a city. We thought it was down the road for us, but we kind of figured out a way we could do this now. We want to get out before before we can't sell out, before we can't sell our house. And so we're we're making our plans sooner than we thought. I, I'm I'm hearing that probably once a day for the last four months. Well, it, the funny part is it's the same conversation I'm having. Exact same conversation. I'll get this one. I've been sick and tired of living in this part of California forever. This pushed me over the edge, this is right? Um, so I, I'm answering a qu couple of questions here in our, in our Q and A. So look at this guys. I shoot, I, I send this video out on April 6th. I said, could this actually fuel the market? May 1st, USA Today, get me out of here. Americans flee crowded cities mid COVID-19. Consider permanent moves. Well, yeah, good grief. Who wants to stay in these major metropolitan areas? Okay, so here's what's going on, guys. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead here. Let me, let me say something. When you hear, I'm not. This is important for our listeners. When you're watching the news and they go, well, pending home sales are down, what do, what do people think, Chantry, when they hear pending home sales are down? Probably That's the, down. the market's going down, probably. Yeah. But does everyone understand now they're down because we don't have enough homes to sell them? Isn't that wild? So you can't trust mass media to provide you with real estate answers in a local school. Well, first of all, I wouldn't trust mass media to tell you anything other than like, <laughs> a, other than like there's a nuke coming or a tornado coming. Fine, right? I'll go, I'll, <laughs> like warning, we saw a tidal wave. Okay, I trust that. <laughs> but you know, thank you for laughing too. It's not, I mean, it's not all bad. They can report the weather, but when they say something, it might be the opposite. So pending home sales are down and people are like, oh, oh man, the economy's struggling. The economy's like going crazy again, right? New home inventory. Someone asked, is this a good time to buy a new home? My answer is yes, but I want to tell you why. Okay. The reason is that you may not be able to find the home that you want right now. So uh, I'm gonna answer the question and say, yes, because uh, what you want, right? Chantry, how much new construction's coming through your office? How many people are coming in these days? Has it increased or no for you? I think that there's been a bigger demand for it. I don't know if the actual purchases of new construction, it, it, it probably has increased a little bit. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, there aren't enough con new construction out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The short term, right? And we're not building homes fast enough in some ways to keep up with all the people that want to buy them. Yep. Yep. And, I, and I, we had this conversation before, but the labor force here is way too small. It mm -hmm. not enough income for laborers. And so just, you can't be a laborer and live. It's hard to be a laborer and live in St. George because the income doesn't keep your expenses. That is totally, totally valid i'm going to skip down here let's talk about interest rates chantry and, and he's right you know guys if you go to ski towns they have a real problem in ski towns now because who can afford to live in park city who's actually doing anything in park city so the people that stay in these cities and this is i think chant this is one of the the fears that we have long term for saint george is um the people like I, I was in park city last weekend i get chatting with a real estate agent how long have you been here she's like 40 years Right. I mean, she paid 200 for her home 40 years ago. So she's living in Park City like it's no big deal, not because she's rich. But what happens is 
and, and our fear, the fear for Washington County is if, if prices get too high, do we become that kind of a market, right? Like, let's not ignore the elephant in the room. This is a real potential problem in Washington County. Don't you think, do you, I mean, would you agree or do you think I'm crazy? No, I would agree. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of been always, well, I guess you could probably make that statement for any uh, resort area. And I think I classify us as a resort area, right? Resort town. Any resort areas, that's a potential problem. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a, I think it's, a, it's really a potential problem for us is um, we get so expensive that then the people who actually work here can't live here. Uh, has anyone seen the massive increase in apartments being built? Oh, oh. Man, it's crazy. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it's, I mean, go over, so our Desert Flower Project, which is with Sunwood Homes, and, and we are going to pitch this. If, you want, if you're an agent or a buyer, you need to know about this product, guys. It is so cool. I'm going to share it with you before we get off the air here. And it's the neatest project by far in product under 300 in Washington County. And I'm grateful for the opportunity. All right, Chantry. So here's the slide. What do people need to understand? Like, <laughs> help them understand how historic this is, man. I've done mortgages 14 years and I've never seen them this low, even after the crash. And I just, I just almost am in this weird place. And I, I must admit, I don't know the back end of the mortgage profitability as well as I probably should. But yep. How can, you, how can you give people two and a half percent interest rate and, and borrow them $500,000 and see enough profit for that to even make sense? Yeah, th th that is so true, man. Well, like, who's actually going to make money up, way up the chain, up the supply chain? Yeah, we're talking about people that invest in mortgage-backed securities without getting too crazy. But that's really what drives mortgages. Because you loan, we then end up selling the loan to Fannie Mae. We get our money back uh, because people are dumping money into mortgage-backed securities. They're yep. dumping mortgage-backed securities, kind of like investing in stocks, but it's in bonds, basically. Correct. It's like, is there enough return on investment to want to invest your money in something at two and a half when we're giving loans out at two and a half percent? Well, kind of a funny analogy, but my dad and I love to have this. So I've got a little stack of sticky notes from ServPro. All right. You know, you can you, you, you a ServPro. So yeah. guys, I've got these sticky notes here. My dad and I always have this conversation. Like you go, it's a BIC. It's a BIC brand. You buy this for $1.99 this thing and you're like wait a minute you mean to tell me they got the paper they 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 have a plant open there's lights and utilities in there they hired a person this person ran it through a machine they printed the stuff on it they cut it in the shape it was glued together they put it on a boat in china and sent it here and there's actually profit for everyone along yeah. the way right that's a great <laughs> yeah. like how's that possible how's that possible so this is the issue with interest rates. Let's go back here to sharing our screen so you guys know what we're talking about. I got Chantry out here's the guild mortgage. We're gonna wrap up here in like a couple of minutes. Interest rates are so low. He's been doing this 14 years. He's never seen money for you to buy a home so cheap. And the question he asked is, well, up the supply chain. Chantry gets paid as a mortgage guy. We won't bore everybody, but you get paid when the deal closes. Yeah, I get paid when the deal closes. But all these people up the supply chain, how do they make money? I don't, I don't know. But when we go, the question is where are interest rates going? Can they even go down? I, I don't see how. <laughs> I mean, how? How can they go down? They're so close to nothing. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked the question right now. Uh, Chantry, uh, Jessica asked, do you think uh, this is for you? Low rates will come back to bite us later. Um. This is, uh, it's not a fear of a mortgage company. A mortgage company's fear is actually that rates fall off and continue to go lower because then they lose all those loans that they're servicing. Um, it will make it difficult for new buyers entering the market. You know, I'm talking about two and a half percent. Let's say rates are 5%, which historically 5% is actually pretty low. In fact, the average since mortgages that we know that in the United States have been around, it's been like 70 years. The average rate is around 8%. 8% is what we shared on the show yesterday. So historically, 5% is incredible. But I do think it's going to be tough when that day comes and interest rates are 5% for 
for these, especially the newer buyers, or maybe even a move up buyer to go, okay, I've got this house over here at a two and a half percent rate that I bought in 2020. It's now 2025. Do I sell this home and go buy a new home and the new home has five and a half percent or five percent interest rate? My payment's gonna be this. How do I justify that? Mm -hmm. And that will be a hard thing for certain folks, to be honest. Well, and something people need to understand on that note, Carrie just made a comment, her kids can't afford to live here because of home prices. A 1% increase in interest rates. So today they're 3.2, say they go to 4.2, 1% increase chantry in interest rate, sounds like nothing to, to the average person, right? Is a, how much buying power do they lose? Yeah, about 10%. Okay, so, so let's paint this for them. You're looking at a $400,000 home. Interest rates go up by one point. You just lost 40000 in your purchasing yeah. power. So now you're at 360 Right. And the same payment is that 400 was. Right. So what people need to understand is when you go, well, sh is this a good time? Is this, someone asked the question, is it a seller's market? I answered it. It's a seller's market. However, we, the interest rates are really making it a buyer's market. And right now, home prices are going up. So it's funny, when you go to buy a truck, Chantry, we've had this conversation because he drives an F-150 and I now, here, let me, let me show everybody right here, all right? <laughs> I went and got a truck 10 days ago. Yeah. I feel pretty manly. So I have an F-150. When I went in there, Chantry, do you think I asked them about the price of the truck or the price of the payment? Payment. That's how Always, payment. Yeah. Always payment. So there are some cash truck buyers. And in this case, I actually did pay cash but I will actually refinance it. I want to tell you guys why. I went and wrote a check out of my business to buy a truck to run my business with. It was a, it was a large number. It wasn't a new truck. It was a 2016. But I will now go refinance that with Mountain America Credit Union by Chantry. Because rates are so cheap, you feel like it's free money. Yeah, I'd rather have my cash in my business and pay a little interest each month, right? So... But the funny part is in housing, we always ask about the home price. You've taught me this on the radio show. We don't often talk about payment. And if we're more concerned about payment, right? So guys, let's wrap up right now, right? With the following thing. Um, we can get into this. This is the last thing I want to say. People can qualify for homes, can't they? They really can, for loans, okay? Average credit score to get a VA loan, 680. That, is that accurate? Is our data correct for, for LA? To be honest. You think it's lower? Say I, that again. I think the average, I feel like that's even high. I think the average interest, or the average FICO score is even lower than that, it seems like. If I wanted to buy a home right now, um, and I'm like, oh man, it seems kind of risky to buy a house I'm renting. Um, what is the least down payment I could put down and buy a home in Washington County? Zero. Could I do a zero? So yeah. I'm going to ask the question, is that risky or not since you have to pay a payment anyway? Because people think it's risky to buy a home zero down. I think that's silly, but anyway, I think it's silly that they think it's risky. They've, not, they've actually determined there are some things to zero down, but certain types of loans done to certain types of borrowers it doesn't increase the risk to the lender. It doesn't increase the chance that that person will make. Now, you may have to have just a little better credit if you're doing zero down and just a little better, what we call debt to income, basically you can afford the house payment. If those things are in line, it's, they're, they're proving that the zero down loan isn't actually a higher risk if those things get checked. Most of it boils down, to be honest with you, is this- well, you can so well, you got, and you've got to make a payment the, anyway. This is the big change the mortgage industry made. It's the reason the market crashed in 2008 is because people were buying homes they couldn't afford. So now, the end. everything about mortgage qualifying, the, there's, there's, there's a few factors, down payment and credit, but the most important factor is your income versus your expenses and that house payment. They use mm -hmm. it as Does that work? Does that work? Does this house payment work within your budget? Correct. And, and here's my, and to that point, I have to make a payment so I can, and by the way, I, I encourage people to buy investment real estate chantry and I are actually connected in, in that fashion. Um, 
but I have to make a rent payment or I can make a payment to my, to a mortgage company on my own. So I'm going to buy if I can, right? Because why, why just pay rent when I could just, I, I, again, if it's 1500 and 1500, you know, if it's 2000 to 2000, 25 and 25, I may as well be paying my own mortgage. And, and but, because of low interest rates, it's increased the quality of home that you can buy. Prices are going up a little bit, partially because of it, but it's increased the quality of home you can buy to match that. Correct. Correct. Let me share something here. This is kind of fun. Facebook guys is running simultaneous over Dave Guyman. Dave's one of my good friends here. He says it doesn't matter how low interest rates are if the sales price is too high and you can't afford the mortgage. Correct. Absolutely valid. Right. And that's the fear that we have with values going too high. But before that, he said, I couldn't afford a home here in my line of work without a second job. That's why I work in California and live here and commute. He actually, so Dave is, uh, he's a fireman, LA. LA County. Horrible. Yeah, and he commutes. So, holy cow. Utah is known for horrible wages. And he's right. I mean, honestly, in southern Utah, it's a struggle. It's a huge struggle. All right, let's ask the last question. You guys are ready for the last question, the most important question. Uh, there's a lot of political stuff. Does the Dixie issue help or hurt the economy? Uh, okay, does it help or hurt the economy, guys? Give us your response there in our poll. We've got the poll running right now. Does it help or hurt? The, now realize it, that's such a vague question I'm asking, but I think that's actually a good question. Like, don't give me any, a, a, a bunch of reasons why. Does this help or hurt? So here's helps. Helps is, hey, any publicity is good publicity. Hurts is any publi bad publicity, or excuse me, bad publicity is bad publicity. Okay, I'm gonna share my opinion. Now, they are going to get my opinion, Chad, so whether they like it or not. That's your show. You can do it. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, gang, we're going to end the polling in five seconds. Does the Dixie issue help or hurt? If you have an answer, you just should answer in three, two, one. All right, here we go. 50-50. 50% said it helps. 50% said it hurts. Okay, here's my, here's my deal, right? So, I'm looking at the Dixie on the hill. This is Chantry knows my office. I'm looking at the D and the Dixie, just like this, out my two windows. I have a pretty awesome office. So um, organizations like Dixie State University and Dixie, and Dixie Regional Medical Center just did it, will have no choice but to change their name. Okay? And I'm going to tell you why. Um, I, I, again, I'm, not, I'm interested in your opinion, but, but it, your opinion doesn't matter, and neither does mine. Okay? But we want our voice to be heard. Here's why. I was speaking to someone who was on the board of trustees at Dixie State University the other day. They're going and sending graduates out across the United States of America with a diploma in their hand. Okay, this is my one thing don't disturb sign. With a diploma in their hand, this is Dixie State University. They're taking that diploma, they're going out into the great big world, which cares about things like Dixie. And they're saying, I went here. They're having students actually contact them and say, can I get my diploma changed? They're having students go out and apply for higher education in larger cities and metropolitan areas, including the South, where people actually don't get why we're called Dixie. So they are so in the limelight. Um, Chantry, does this make sense to you since you're on here live? Like they don't have a choice. And here, let me give you an example why. If my basement floods today, I have two choices. Sit on the floor and let it the water rise around me while I curse my neighbor who didn't turn his hose off. Or I can get up and start draining the basement. These giant organizations, they don't have it. They have to drain the basement. Um, I believe that Dixie High School, I'm going to look at Dixie again. I'm a Dixie high grad. I believe that Dixie High School, Dixie Battery, Dixie Four Wheel Drive. I believe that these organizations, my opinion, will not have to change their name and I hope they won't. Uh, I don't want to see us lose our heritage and lose what makes Utah's Dixie, Southern Utah really great. But uh, I'm afraid these large organizations will not have a choice. And my analogy of the basement, it doesn't matter if it's the neighbor's fault, the basement's flooded, right? And so the problem is that the connotation for a lot of people outside of St. George. So, I mean, I appreciate the protests to defend the Dixie name. I'm a Dixie High School uh, mountain bike coach. I hope we keep that name, but I don't think it's going to happen for Dixie State University. I think they will be changing the name. I think that will be quick. Dude, what do you think? Think, think I'm crazy? 
Maybe? No? No, they probably will. So the, the and, and and if I can give my answer to fix the issue of health of the economy, I don't think it matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not saying they won't change it. I'm just saying, just like 50-50, some people care, some people don't. I don't. Care. Yep. And by the way, your your answer is gonna be the same as mine. You've done mortgages for 14 years. How many people came in your office and ever brought Dixie up ever in your whole entire life ever? Zero. So our team, we've sold 1,300 homes. I've never had someone ask us about Dixie. So I want people to hear that. Even though no one's ever asked, they will have to change their name at Dixie State. I, I don't see any way around it. The basement flooded, doesn't matter whose fault it is, doesn't matter if oh, it's the liberals, it's the millennials, it's the protesters, it doesn't matter. They will have to change it. And that's been, and, and everyone's gonna blame Mayor Pike. Oh, it's this guy. Look guys, it's way more complicated than Mayor Pike. These are complicated issues. All right, Chantry, my friend. Thank you for coming on. Air bump gang, everybody, thank you for coming on today. Two questions, are nightly rentals still hot right now? Yeah. <laughs> yes. More than ever, surprisingly. Um, I want, to, I'm gonna say, ask us about specific uh, subdivisions. Okay, uh, do not buy one without talking to us about specific subdivisions. I repeat, I repeat, I repeat, I repeat. Uh, what is the Dixie issue, an anonymous attendee? Um, the Dixie issue is, uh, I'm going to type it in so it's in for the record. Uh, people, uh, what do they do? Connect it to this to the racism, right? Yeah, and uh, it's 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 tough because that's not really the deal here. All right, gang. Last slide of the day. Contact information because you do need it. All right. Thank you, Chantry. There we are, looking very professional. Chantry's with Guild Mortgage Company. I'm with the Larkin Group. We like to brag about our Best of Southern Utah win, the popularity contest chance, what we call that. Uh, you can visit us, me, at uh, soldinsaintgeorge.com. And uh, I just send everyone to the website. Chantry Abbott Guild Mortgage, 674-1090. Can they text that number? Yeah, you can. Yeah. If you're thinking about getting a mortgage, if you are thinking about refinancing, if you're thinking about, well, should I buy an investment property? And how could I orchestrate all the moving parts? You should be talking to my friend Chantry Abbott. It's 1258. We're off the air. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks. Yeah. Over and out.